the original roots, the classic roots, was absolutely the best that it could be at the time for the 70s. We in this roots are the best that we can be for 2016. I'm gonna get Miss Elizabeth to hand you back over to the overseer. And I got me a nice warm spot, like an old hound right there at the fireplace by her feet. And I ain't gonna let no guinea man get me kicked back out to that field. You understand me, Toby? Quinta Quinta. No, 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 listen to me. Master's wife done named you Toby. Quinta Quinta. Pamoro Moro Quinta. I ain't got time to chin wag with it. Toby. Toby! 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 You're gonna be Toby now! And you're gonna be Toby forever! I'm Jamie Sanchez, and this is Vice Talks Film. Today I'm sitting down with Mark Volper. He's the executive producer of the remake of the wildly successful made for TV miniseries Roots. He inherited the rights to the series from his father, David Wolper, who produced the original in 1977. He is joined by Mario Van Peebles, who is a guest director in the series, along with Mandela Van Peebles, his son, who stars in the film. Why do you think the original Roots was so successful? Roots, I have to say, was one of the first shows that I ever saw the American story told not through the eyes of the colonizer. Alex Haley, when he wrote the book, took a devastatingly dark period of history and found the family in the midst of it. And I think that's why it was so powerful. Like everyone else, my question was, it wasn't a question, I had already answered it. I am not doing Roots again. It is not gonna happen. There's no time or place or event that's gonna make me wanna you know, step into the shoes of trying to do Roots again until I sat my 16-year-old boy down to watch the original Roots. He could not engage with it. And wow, in that moment I realized that's why we gotta do Roots again. We gotta translate it for a whole new generation because they're not gonna go back and watch the old one. About 40 years has passed, right? So we've obviously learned a lot of things about both slavery and about certain historical components that were in the original story. How important was remaining factual and being extremely accurate when telling? It, it had, that was one of the pedestals we built this on. I think TV audiences can smell when something's not authentic and this Roots is a lot more authentic in a lot of ways than the original Roots. I knew that was important. The first Kunta Kinte got his name whipped out of him in 20 lashes. Malachi Kirby, who plays Kunta now, gets it whipped out of him in 40 lashes. Why is that important? This man needed to hold on to his name as long as humanly possible. And if he gives it up in two or three lashes, that's not honest to the power of this character. That's not honest to the lives that these people lived on these plantations. I, I think it's, it's best to know the actual honest truth and confront it head on and be able to talk about it openly. I think Roots is, is a key part of that conversation and bringing it into media in ways that it doesn't feel like an education, doesn't feel like learning, but you're watching this and you're learning about history. It's factual, it's cinematic, and it's enjoyable. Was that ever overwhelming for you to have the responsibility of telling a black story while being a white man? Yes, and I've never done anything that was that much of a burden of responsibility. And it, it, that, that was part of the reason for saying, I can't do this again. My father had Alex Haley standing next to him, working hand in hand with him. I needed somebody to hold my hand. And holding my hand was bringing LeVar Burton and Will Packer on board. LeVar Burton is the face of the original roots in very many ways. So, you know, I needed to bring partners on board, quite frankly, because I was scared shitless. You think I leave my family here with you? And the time they start having babies, I'd be a, a thousand miles gone. And I see you still a massa. I die every day. I was impressed by the level of research when I read the script. And then, like most filmmakers, because one of the cool things that, that Mark did was he gave us all permission as filmmakers to really come in and, and own each night in our own cinematic language. 
each of the four directors two hours a night. Each of them could make their own film. We didn't have them all sit down and talk about what the style of the whole film was going to be. They needed to articulate it directly from their personal connection to the piece and about their character, because each night kind of revolves around one character. Kunta Kinte, night one, Kizzy, night two, Chick and George, night three, and Tom Moore, night four. I didn't want this to be a piece of sort of artwork history that hangs on the wall. I wanted, if you watched it, to be, you would be engaged in it. You'd be thrust, you would experience it. And so part of it was um, everything that you could see, like in night two, uh, we start out with Kunta's, sort of, Kunta's escape, we drop right into that world, and then we're dealing with the Redcoats, the dynamic between the Redcoats and the Rebels. You're English. You know Jew for I am a Mandinka warrior. I will kill many Americans for your king! You'll have to walk, head east into the Great Dismal Swamp, and meet up with Lord Dunmer's Ethiopian regiment. You'll be given food, shelter, and a letter of manumission. What is a letter of manumission? It's the piece of paper that states you're free. I mean, obviously, right now, 2016, this is a very interesting time to not only be black in America, but to be white in America, too, and to be young. And we're looking at things like the Black Lives Matter movement. We're talking about mass incarceration. We do have a black president in office. How important was it to, like, be able to take themes and elements from what's going on present day and make it identifiable in this project. As Americans, if we can't take a hard look, an unflinching look at how we got here, then it's hard for us to move forward mm -hmm. and step, step out of the existing trap paradigm and say, how do we get to a place where we are post-racial, where we are post-gender, where we, we're no longer falling prey to the isms without being conscious of how we got here? Inside this sort of six in perverse institution of slavery, they took Mandinkas and Seifas and Houses and folks from all over Africa. And in taking away our language and taking away our music, they stripped us of our differences. And so in effect, they created this huge tribe of what would become black America. Without that tribe of Africans, black Americans, I'm sure that if the forefathers knew this, they would have turned the ship around. They said, we didn't, damn sure didn't bring you here to be president. We didn't bring you here to be Chuck Berry and Jimi Hendrix and Nina Simone. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know that they realized in doing this, they would be creating a, 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 a whole other tribe that have, would have this power and this quest and this thirst for knowing who we are. Uh, and you, you, you took the drum from us, but that didn't mean you took the rhythm. The rhythm just went into the guitar and became blues and rock and roll and gospel. You said, we can't sing, sing to our gods, but we could sing to Christ. Well, that became how we, we brought that flavor. So I think in so many ways, when you watch Roots, you'll see all these different levels of how America got to be America. Speaking about just the severity of some of these scenes and the emotion. I'm curious to know what was one of the more emotional days on set. For me in episode two was uh, unquestionably when, um, God, it's even tough to think about it, when Kizzy is stripped away from her family. That, that, that is a really rough scene. Then of course, uh, seeing Noah, who happens to be related to me, I was like, oh man, I can't even yeah. watch this, you know. Be more careful next time. Yes. What did you say? Yes, master. A nigger named Noah. I never knew the doctor to be a man of humor before he gave you that name. I wonder what my mama would have named me. What's that now? I said, I wonder what my mama would have named me. Had she not died the way she died. I wonder about your mama. I wonder about your No. Mouth. Speaking about from a casting perspective and actors, Mandela, what kind of were your initial thoughts about taking on this role of playing Noah? Uh, my initial thoughts were, how can I get involved with this? How can I weasel into... To get, <laughs> that was my first thoughts. <laughs> Once finding out Dad was going to be involved with Roots, I had talked to him about maybe auditioning. He said I was a little too old for Noah. I'm 21. <laughs> But um, I still wanted to try. So I sent in a tape, an audition tape, under my middle name. Uh, so Molly, no, nothing else. 
And I just sent it out there. If I was bad, it wouldn't be any reflection on dad. If I was good, it wouldn't be any reflection on dad. And I just want to see what I could do with me. And he didn't tell me either. <laughs> really? So I'm looking at text. Hey, if, if, if the guy sucks, I, what am I going to do? Yeah, right. what, 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 I, I mean, what if he sucks? I don't want to yeah, do well, What if he <laughs> sucked and I said it out loud That's to fine. you in That's front fair. of you? That's fair. That's totally fair. My best role is not as director. It's his father. I've had mm -hmm. the best time. What was it like for you when you first walked on some of these sets where these plantations were actual real plantations that at one point owned slaves? I just remember having some downtime. I'm like, this tree I'm sitting next to is seeing me act out something that it has seen for ages. This tree was here when this was a real deal. This tree is like... Yeah. A witness? Yeah. It's like, that's real. It's real. There is obviously usage of the N-word throughout the entire film. And I'm curious, as filmmakers, how you determine the appropriate usage and the appropriate amount of times that word is used in a script. I never tried to use it more or less. Um, I think when we used it, it was pretty specific, and it, it came up in a couple places. We thought that this is this is where it would play out. This is not sugar coated at all. So it was no no sense of can't show this, can't say that, don't do this, don't do that. We wanted to. You can either do it do things how you want them to be, or you can do things how they are. Ah! Ah! I'm I think after I watched all four episodes, I, it's a weird, bewildering moment, but I found myself almost like, how did this happen? Like, how was this possible? How was something that was so obviously violent and inhumane able to occur? And then I, I was curious to know what you guys kind of wanted the audience to ask themselves leaving the experience. Well, you know, I think for, for, for a lot of people watching this, it's, it's almost like watching some weird science fiction film yeah. on some level. Because it's hard to believe that 200, 300 years ago, you know, this went on. Mm -hmm. This was sanctioned. This was quote unquote legal. People are almost haunted by it. I mean, people feel like it's affected them on some cellular level. Is it possible that we're doing something parallel now? What, what's going on now that we don't know about? We know about slavery now, you know, but what's going on now? Is there still slavery now? Well, the answer is yes. Are we still doing terrible things to each other as a species? And the answer is probably yes. What would you say to some of the folks that may or may not support a candidate like Trump or may or may not kind of share his ideals? It feels like now, of all times, it's a very big Isn't it? Conversation. Doesn't it feel like it's, it's right on time? Part of what, what, what I loved about the experience of doing Roots, aside from that it was, it was challenging and sometimes emotionally very difficult for me because you're dealing with some really tough stuff and you're, it's unflinching. We don't look away in this one. We don't sugarcoat history at all. But there's that old saying that history repeats itself. Well, maybe it doesn't always repeat itself, but it does rhyme. So what is it about that, what's happening in Roots that rhymes with the fact that right now the former slave-owning states are trying to repeal our right to vote? What happened in Roots that rhymes with the climate change we're dealing with right now? What happened in Roots that rhymes with some of the things we're seeing in this election right now? If you don't know where you're going, then it's hard to know where you've been. Dr. King says we either learn to live together as brothers and sisters or we perish together as fools.